the reason that we got to increase costs on these folks. So private equity firms aren't generally involved in the manufacturing. I'm just telling you this is over general because it's only 11% yeah, of your business. You're saying, you're saying right now that's not the reason that manufactured homes are rising costs. You're saying it's ESG. I'm saying it's a contributor and it is buying. It's a contributor? It is. A when did ESG come up in the manufactured homes industry? When? ESG is a framework. When? It's the main. When? We're, when did it come facing, about? When did they start talking about? 2019? 18? We're facing, we're facing these DOE. When right did they now. start talking about ESG in your industry? Thank you so much, Chairman. Uh, you know, this is, I think, our third hearing on this. It's, it's bizarre to me because, you know, one of the things that I've been really appreciative of um, previous administrations and others been talking about, uh, you know, movement around, you know, weatherization and, you know, even manufactured homes doing the kind of upfront, and it does cost money up front. It leads to reducing, you know, um, reliance, you know, high, you know, utility bills, you know, energy efficiency leads to actually lower bills for many of the families and they can't afford it. So it's not all going, you know, right out the window when we don't have some of those investments um, at the front end. So it's really bizarre for me and we continue to hear this as, oh, the whole housing crisis is because of this. Uh, it's just, I'm taken aback. Uh, because it, you know, we all know it existed before even the ESG even was, invented or, or created. And so, you know, I know in my district, for instance, you know, the, uh, the tax foreclosure crisis was, was just unbelievable. We had one of the worst tax foreclosure crisis in the country. These are families that actually own their homes, but they could not pay for their property taxes. ESG had nothing to do with it, nothing. Actually, probably if it did, maybe there would have been some sort of best practices or policies implemented. But they're also acting like ESG is like binding. Is ESG binding? Ms. Nagy? It really depends on, on whether by law it is. Yeah, they decide. It's a standard, yeah. Is it binding? Uh, it depends on the legislation and possible litigation. I know, but we're, right now, right now, ESG policies, is it binding? Is it forcing people to, impl yeah, is, it, is it binding? It's not. It's advisory, right? It, it's, it's like you should look into this. It's a, it's a factor that can be looked at because it may have correlation with risk magnitude and it's consistent with fiduciary duty in the investment community. Sure, sure. H how about you, ma'am? Coach requirements are binding, yes, ma'am. Oh, they're binding. They're requiring them to look at these things because what, what is because it's, it's actually increasing their mortgage payments? Is it, is it increasing the cost of home? home? I mean, I'm, I don't understand. The 2021 um, energy code would increase yep. the cost of a home. About, I think some, some of our members say about $31,000 in their area. So one of the things that my colleagues talk about is manufactured homes, and it's about 11%, I think. Is it 11%, Mr. Bird? Like 11% of single-family homes are manufactured, house, is it manufactured housing, is that correct? Yeah, from that to the mid teens Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that they were trying to advance is energy-efficient standards for manufactured homes, which many have claimed have made them unaffordable. But though the data and everyone shows that the cost to comply with energy standards, actually those improvements reduce maintenance and utility costs for manufacturing housing residents in the long term. Is that correct? That's not correct. Well, really? Why well, is that? Well, you tell me because you're all acting like this environmental, you know, this whole little policies around looking at the fact that we have a climate crisis is increasing the cost of manufactured homes, which, which we all know is because of private equity firms, because of investors. Ms. Nagy, you know I'm right. All this existed before that. And now that we're telling them, hey, you gotta be more responsible, that all of a sudden we're saying, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, you're the reason that we gotta increase costs on these folks. Understand this, this is the bizarre thing. I've never even heard of ESG until now. Like, like I'm really curious because to me, my families, they seen the rising cost of housing not because of ESG. It's because of all the other issues I wish we would be more targeted around talking about. Because you know, majority of the homes in my district are less than $100,000, but we can't get some of these banks to actually loan because it's not profitable. So somebody that wants to buy a $60,000, $70,000 home in Wayne County, Michigan, can't find somebody to lend it to them because it's not profitable. So what do they, I mean, literally everybody else is swallowing up these homes because, you know, 60, 70 investor firms come together, they buy a bunch of them, they turn them into rental properties. We're literally have a block and like two people own their homes. The rest of them are literally renters and they're paying way more, much more than what they would have paid if they had 
like gotten a mortgage from some sort of banking industry. I say this, and I, don't, I really don't want you all to see, I'm not disrespecting you all, but please don't make this about ESG. You're actually failing your members and your industry, and literally your sector, by focusing on ESG and not the root causes of why the cost of housing is going up in our country.